Mr. Chair, I rise in strong support of the ranking member's amendment. And I apologize to my majority colleagues for daring to use again, because it's already been used a few times here, two words that have been banned from the Oxford Republican Dictionary, climate change. In fact, so total is this ban that not only does this bill scan and scrub the Department of Defense of an aggregate $621 million in climate change-related initiatives, it also omits any mention of the very term, lest any unfortunate discussion occur. But in the Indo-Pacific, the most consequential region for our national defense, climate change is a reality, a strategic risk, and consequence in contingency that cannot be simply sloughed off to pander to an extreme and, and indefensible denial perspective. Fortunately, our Department of Defense has been realistic in its assessment. The DOD's recent climate risk assessment states very directly, quote, in the Indo-Pacific, sea level rise and more extreme weather events complicate the security environment, place key DOD warfighting infrastructure and surrounding communities at risk, and challenge local capacity to respond. The DOD's analysis also highlights the significant investment that the DOD is making in the billions of dollars in the Indo-Pacific to include Guam, the Marshall Islands, and Palau, which are highly vulnerable to these hazards. Let's take Palau, a key location for the mutual defense of our friends and allies in the Indo-Pacific, where, for example, the Air Force's agile combat approach concept requires airfields. Hundreds of millions, if not more, of dollars in investments are being made there to refurbish and upgrade locations, and failure to address or even acknowledge, much less address, growing climate concerns puts these sites and the deals, these plans at risk. Mr. Bishop made mention of the Reagan test site on Kwajalein Atoll in the Republic of the Marshall Islands, a test site our nation uses to collect data for long-range missile tests and missile defense. Its radars also provide the critical ability to track allied and adversary satellites in orbit over the Indo-Pacific. Failure to address climate change will put this one-of-a-kind site at risk and degrade our nation's ability to deter and respond to crisis and conflict should it arise. Yet this bill strikes $16.3 million from the President's budget's request for climate change initiatives at Kwajalein Atoll. I'm sorry, Atoll. There are many other examples from across our security spectrum. The Congressional Research Service quotes them, the DOD maintains more than 5,000 military installations. Of these, more than 1,700 are in coastal areas and have been or may be affected by sea level rise or extreme weather events. In 2018, Hurricane Michael caused an estimated $4.7 billion in damage to Florida's Tyndall Air Force Base, while Hurricane Florence caused around $3.6 billion in damages to North Carolina's Marine Corps, Corps, Corps Base Lejeune. In 2021, winter storms damaged 694 facilities across four military installations in Texas at Fort Hood, Oklahoma at Fort Sill, Kansas at Fort Riley, and Louisiana at Fort Johnson. Climate change does not come at the expense of our national defense. It is a part of it, and we must recognize that the world is facing ongoing and accelerating climate change. We must adapt prepare, adjust, and respond, and this is a major factor. And despite all of this, this bill before us deducts arbitrarily $621 million from the Defense Department's climate change-related initiatives. This is more than just misguided. It is negligent and should be reversed. I yield back. <laughs> 